So Masayuki Uemura, the lead architect of what would become the NES and the Super Nintendo, died Monday at the age of 78. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about his history of Nintendo and thank him for creating what will become two really great systems. Hi everybody, Blood Moon Bobby here. So, as I said in the intro, the lead architect of the Nintendo Famicom and Super Famicom, Masayuki Uemura, died Monday at the age of 78. So, I wanted to uh, look into his history of Nintendo because I always knew him as the person who basically uh, was the lead architect of what became the NES and Super Nintendo but I honestly didn't know a lot about uh, the specifics of his history with the company until now. So, Uemura started working for Nintendo in 1971. He was actually recruited by Gunpei Yokoi, who is most famous for inventing the Game Boy and the Game & Watch. So, uh, Yokoi... He recruited Uemura to come work at Nintendo. Basically, one of the first things Uemura did was he worked with Yokoi to make light gun games with Nintendo. And in 1981, he got a call from the president of Nintendo at the time, the late Hiroshi Yamauchi, to work on a cartridge-based game console. And this is what Uemura said, what the call, what happened during that call. Quote, President Yamauchi told me to make a video game system, one that could play games on cartridges. He always liked to call me after he'd had a few drinks, so I didn't think much of it. I just said, sure thing, boss, and hung up. It wasn't until the next morning when he came up to me sober and said, that thing we talked about, you're on it, that it hit me. He was serious. And as you can get, as you can guess, the system that both Yamauchi and Uemura were talking about was the Famicom, which would become the uh, NES worldwide. As I mentioned before, Uemura was also the lead architect of the Super Famicom, and he actually worked on quite a few other things when he was at Nintendo. He also worked on the color TV game systems, which were basically like Pong consoles. I kind of considered them among Nintendo's first consoles. Like, think of them as like the NES before the NES, if you will. And he also worked on the Famicom Disk System and the Super Famicom Satellaview. He was also a producer on several NES games like Ice Climber, Klukulu Land, and some of these system sports games. Uemura became the director of game studies at Ritsu Meikon University after retiring from Nintendo in 2004. As I get older, one of the great things about how I'm still into video games today is now that I'm older, I really like to spend a lot of time learning about the history of the people that either created a lot of the game consoles or started up these companies or even ran them. So in the last several years, I felt very fortunate that I've got to learn about um, the really great legends of Nintendo, like, like I said, the founder of the Game Boy, Gunpei Yokoi, and I also learned a lot about uh, Hiroshi Yamauchi and how he turned Nintendo from basically a toy company and a playing card company into a video game company. So I am really glad that I got to learn a lot about Uemura, Uemura himself, who I basically consider the father of the NES and the Super Nintendo. And I really think that it was the system that saved the video game industry in the U.S., I should say, because I know that the video game crash was very specific to the U.S. It was not a thing that occurred in, like, Japan and Europe. But even so, I'm still really thankful for him for creating what will become the NES and Super Nintendo, because video games still remains one of my favorite hobbies. If anything, it's become an even more fascinating thing as the years go on, not just playing these games but also you know getting better at them and learning to strategize and through video games I've met some really amazing people you know friends in person and getting to meet um, you all online so I just think that without the NES and Super Nintendo I just think that the video game industry would be a much different place and it kind of makes me scared to wonder what would it be like if Nintendo didn't sell the NES and Super Nintendo in the States. Would video games 
would I even be talking to you all right now? Would I have gotten to meet these amazing people? Would video games ever become popular again in the States? Or would it just be the thing where it's like, oh, it's that fad from the 70s. Or, oh, it's popular in Japan and Europe in South America, but not really in the States. So it, it really, it's really kind of a scary thought to think, you know, what would happen if the NES and Super Nintendo weren't released here. So I really wanted to make this video to say thank you to Masayuki Uemura. I'm really glad that I got to learn about his history with Nintendo and even know that he was essentially the brains behind the NES and Super Nintendo. I think I might be repeating myself, but I... It, it's really just the thing where like it just goes without words you know because especially since I since I was a little kid I thought that um you know one day I would grow up and I would have to grow out of video games but I've learned over um the more recent years that there's a lot more to it and I'm really glad that I was able to get into this hobby thanks to you know Nintendo and their systems and especially like when I started to learn about retro games I remember the other day my mom was like why are you so interested in these like older game consoles and even though I grew up as like somebody who grew up on the GameCube and the DS I'm still really wanted to learn about a lot of the games that came out on the NES and Super Nintendo. I wanted to see those games that people like James Rolfe and Adam Korlick grew up with. I wanted to see what was basically, you know, Nintendo's beginnings in the video game industry. So I'm really glad that um I've gotten to um you know learn about um, Nintendo's history and Masa Yuki Uimura and I hope you rest in peace and I uh, thank him for um, being the lead architect of the NES and Super Nintendo. So, yeah, so th those are basically my thoughts. So, let me know your thoughts down below. Um, did you know that Masayuki Uemura was the lead, lead architect of the NES and Super Nintendo? Did you know he, he also had a hand in making all these other products for Nintendo? Leave all those thoughts down below, and until next time, this has been Blood Moon Bobby, and thank you all for watching. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this Blood Moon Bobby video. Like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel to see more of my videos and ring the bell to be notified about my latest uploads. Don't forget to follow me on social media for my latest opinions and video updates. I hope to see you next time.